I want you to give your next to me the same amount of love you gave all your other competitors. Start clapping right now for Mr. Patrick Keen. Mr. Patrick. Thanks, guys. I'm one of the comics. Uh, women often complain. That's it. Yeah, there's no second half. Pretty much it for me, guys. Thank you so much. For the great time. Uh, women often complain that uh, whenever men are talking to them, they're only looking at their breasts. And I get this problem a lot as well. Often when talking with me, women are only looking at my penis. And sometimes it gets so awkward, I have to put it back in my pants. <laughs> my eyes are up here, okay, girls? Jesus. It's good to be where a guy can't even get dressed up and go out anymore. Uh, I'm trying to dress better as I get older, because um, recently I was told by a homeless guy as I was walking down the street, he said, uh, hey man, hang in there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's good. I'm traveling around, uh, like a lot of the comics, traveling around the country. I don't know if anybody's been, but I've uh, been flying to a lot of shows. I used to be afraid to fly, but I had to get over it, because I was dating a girl who was also afraid to fly. And you can't have two people in the same relationship, both afraid to fly. It looks ridiculous when a couple is clinging to each other, screaming, we're all gonna die. <laughs> and you're still on Expedia.com, booking <laughs> the flight. So, oh, no, so. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, um, a lot of Americans, we don't really go overseas to travel. We go state to state. Each state is like its own country now. Um, a lot more Americans are moving south to places like Florida, Texas, Arizona, California. I don't know if we're moving south for the weather or if it's because as a country, we've gotten so overweight, we're actually sliding down <laughs> the planet. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, good. Uh, so yeah, uh, I have parents. I don't know anybody else. Some of you guys. Some of you guys have right. My mom always worries whenever I travel. She never knows where I'm at. She's like, are you okay? I heard there was a train that crashed in Spain this week. I'm like, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Uh, it was close, though. It was close. But that whole Atlantic Ocean thing kept us safe. So round of applause to the Atlantic Ocean. You guys working hard for you tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good. Uh, I pocket called my mom the other day, uh, also known as butt dialing. And, uh, you know, your phone dials from inside your pocket without you knowing it. She's like, hey, did you mean to call me? And I was like, no, I pocket called you. And she said, oh, well, your pocket is a better son than you are, motherfucker. So I was like, oh. So, uh, so yeah, that's some parent stuff. Uh, moms want to have kids no matter what, right? They don't care about the economy, the environment, overpopulation. I signed on for one of these Big Brother programs, which is a great thing. If you get to do a Big Brother thing, that's good. My little guy's wonderful. He's uh, 65, <laughs> and he takes me to movies, ball games. <laughs> Let's me stay out as late as I want. Guys. So much easier. Going into it than I thought it'd be. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I was raised. I had a good upbringing, man. I was raised in the suburbs, and a lot of uh, a lot of suburban fathers want their sons to be professional athletes at all costs, but they don't marry the right woman. And my dad did his part. He was a big guy. He was athletic. But if you want a son in the big leagues, you need to marry a big farm girl, or a tough inner city girl, or a big tough South Pacific Island woman. <laughs> when you marry a sweet little Irish girl who likes musicals. Ta-da! <laughs> Your son might turn out to be a stand-up comedian. Uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention in school, so uh, I live in a tough neighborhood now. And uh, my neighbors fight a lot. There's a lot of crying, screaming, broken glass, unbroken glass. And the other night it was so bad it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And I was like, oh man, now I gotta do something, right? I gotta figure this out, I gotta get involved. So the next day I went to the barber and I had him cut the hair <laughs> on the back of my neck. And, uh, I feel so much better about everything. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a true story. I don't know if anybody's been in a true story. Some people, <laughs> told people here, same people that have parents. All right, cool. This is a I lived, uh, I lived in a really safe neighborhood for a while uh, called Japan. It's, uh, it's just you go out that door and then uh, to the west and then the take the Pacific. You can go out that door too. It'll take you a few extra minutes. So go out that door. Uh, and Japan's a good time. Uh, I had a girlfriend while I was over there. Uh, I was there two years and I dated her. And uh, I came back to America and all my friends found out I had a Japanese girlfriend. They're like, oh, you have an Asian fetish. You have an Asian fetish. And I was like, no, I don't have an Asian fetish. I have a woman fetish. And I was living in Asia, <laughs> right? <laughs> two and two be foe. <laughs> right? We adjust to our surroundings. 
There's no such thing as a racist penis. This is a very non-discriminatory part of the human body. If you put a white supremacist in Harlem in a week, he'll be singing, We Shall Overcome. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much.